name's Simon. And my name's Ian. And this is the Odds Profit Podcast. This week we are focusing on the international schedule. It's the second international break of the season, but um, don't moan too much. We can still <laughs> have some fun. What do you think, Ian? Yeah, look, I mean, it's um, pretty intense games coming up, but also I think a lot of exciting fixtures. I think we're in for a, a treat this weekend. Yeah, me too. Now, we're going to divide this podcast into two parts. In part one, we're going to discuss some of the games on Friday. I'm going to pick out three games and three tips, and Ian will do the same. And in part two, we'll be taking a look at Saturday's schedule. So, let's get right into it, Ian. Great, Simon. So, look, um, obviously there's a lot coming up. Um, I know you've had your eye on a couple of key fixtures. Um, can you tell me about maybe what, what's caught your eyes? Yes, I can, Ian. I can tell you that all day. <laughs> now, the first game I'm doing is uh, Cyprus against Croatia in Larnaca. Now, Ian, before I get into these juicy tips, do you want an interesting factoid? Go for it. Give me something uh, that I haven't heard before. The Cyprus National Anthem, or the Cypriot National Anthem, mm-hmm. is called the Hymn to Liberty, or the Hymn to Freedom, and it's actually the longest national anthem in the world by length of text. Did you know that? Yeah, I thought you'd, you'd give me something that I haven't heard before. Oh, uh, I'm only messing, I'm only messing. I'm just looking for that juicy, juicy tip off you about the bets in this game. Come on. Okay, okay. Well, anyway, look, Cyprus are bottom of group page. They've lost four out of six games. Croatia are top with four wins from six themselves. So, obviously, Croatia are going to be the, the heavy favourite in the market. However, Croatia only beat Cyprus 1-0 in the reverse fixture in March. And they've been kind of modest goal scorers throughout their campaign. They've scored eight and six in total. Mm. Not the most net shredding numbers you'll ever hear. So um, Croatia to win 2-7 to seven or 1.29 is just way too skinny for our liking. But if you couple a Croatia victory with under 2.5 goals to be scored, it comes in at 2.88 or 15-8, to eight, which seems crazily big. So... Yeah, I mean, Cyprus have conceded just eight times in six qualifiers so far, so that's that's what I'd be going for there. Croatia win and under two and a half goals. Excellent, sounds interesting. Um, I've been taking a look at one of the fixtures myself, actually. Um, the Latvia versus Netherlands game caught me caught my eye. Um, so I know game, obviously, look, Netherlands are the, the favourite all the way through this one, um, and they're sitting pretty at the top of the table. So, look, they'll most likely rest some key players going into it. Um, but we're looking at another easy win. Uh, odds are clearly heavily stacked in the visiting team's favour. Um, however, those who are brave enough but don't want to go all the way might fancy a half-time double chance bet with Latvia first or a draw at half-time. Um, and that's coming in at 3.25. So it might help towards a nice um, tidy little bet builder as well. Yeah, sweet. Sounds good, Ian. All right, Ian, I'm sticking with Group H for my second game on Friday, and I'm taking you to Kazan in Russia, where the hosts meet Slovakia. So it's second versus third in Group H. Excellent. Oh, wait, actually, fun factoid time. Now, here we go. Strap yourself in. Did you know that the game Tetris comes from Russia? No, I actually didn't think that. Yeah, Um, it's one of the most popular games in the world, of course, and it was invented in 1984 by a programmer and scientist called Alexei Petsinov. Oh, excellent. So there you go. You pleased? Uh, yeah, look, I mean, I, I mean, it, it's all about everything aligning and connecting. So if you can get that uh, with your tip of the day. Blimey. I, I, I just didn't think you were going to take my factoid somewhere like that. Yeah. It's cheesy sorry. as hell. Anyway, yeah. let's get back to the game here. And um, Slovakia are actually a really strange bunch. Their, their 2-0 win over Cyprus last month was their first victory in five attempts. But they also beat Russia 2-1 in the reverse fixture in March and won by the same scoreline in Poland in June against Robert Lewandowski and company. So they're capable of springing a surprise or two. Russia are under new management in the form of Valery Karpin. He's three games in, he's won two. He has seven uncapped players in his latest squad, so he's trying to change things up a little bit. There's no place for their battering ram striker up front, Artem Zuba, who has 30 goals in 55 games. There's no Denis Sheryshev in midfield either. So there, there's not really that many goals in the squad in general. So They're looking a bit light. A little bit light. And Fyodor Smoloff is the highest scorer in the squad now. And he's only got 15. The next best is Alexei Miranchuk with six. And Russia's last two games against Minos, Cyprus and Malta finished just 2-0 in their favour. So they're not exactly tearing teams to shreds no, under the the light. no no not at all so maybe wise to look at the unders markets in this one so you can get under two and a half goals which is slightly skinny at eight to 13 or 1.62 but it looks a decent price and that bet would have landed in each of russia's last three group games 
So I'm going to stick with that one, Ian. That Little sounds... action in Kazan, as usual. Yeah, I thought I saw a movie about that before, but I can't talk about that here. Um, <laughs> anyway, excellent. Thanks, Simon. Um, and I'm not going too far away, just um, going to uh, Group G. And we're looking here, I, um, I suppose, a fixture that caught my eye was the Turkey-Norway game. Uh, has everything riding on it. Uh, we've got, a obviously, you know, the 6-1 defeat is going to be still ringing in um, Turkey's ears. But, you know, you got to look at the fact that Turkey beat Norway at home as well. Um, 3 nil, I think. 3 nil, it was, yeah. yeah. So um, Convincing. You've got to ask yourself, who's going to be the more confident of the two sides going into this? Um, and for me, I think Turkey are probably going to come out fighting um, and I think Norway are going to try and hold out for a draw for the first half and size them up um, and get settled into the into the game, I suppose, really. Um, so I'm actually thinking really... You know, it'll go to a draw at half time and then full mm-hmm. time. I think Turkey might get a goal in there. Um I think they'll they'll get into it. And I just don't see Norway coming up with the quality. Um so yeah, that's what I've gone for. I've gone for a half time, full time bet. Um I'm going for a draw at half time and then Turkey at full time and that's nine to two or five point five. Jeepers. That's a big price. Yeah, it's a juicy one. Yeah. Nice one, Ian. Okay, and I am back in the saddle with my game number three for Friday, which is focusing on Germany versus Romania. So Hansi Flick has a 100% winning record since taking charge in August. It's not so bad. Hard to back against that one. It sure is. Look, his reign is only three games long, but it's impressive nonetheless. They've scored 12 times. They haven't conceded even once. And they're top of Group J, unsurprisingly. Romania are flying high in third, maybe against their pre-season expectations, you could say. There are no pushovers and their 1-0 defeat to Germany in Bucharest back in March would kind of back that up. However, the Germans had 18 shots that evening and Florin Nita made a whopping 9 saves that evening. So maybe it was more one-sided than the scoreline suggests. Possibly. Stands to reason then that we should probably expect Germany to be comfortable again in um, in Hamburg. Comfortable. <laughs> I just made up a word there. But so um, backing the hosts to nil at 8-13 to or 1.62 looks a nice safe bet. If you want something a little bigger to fill your pockets, you could go for an anytime goal scorer, maybe one from Timo Werner, Leroy Sané or Serge Gnabry. They all look available at a decent price. But um, personally, yeah. I like Werner. Yeah, he's, he's four- on form at the moment as well, isn't he? There you go. Yeah, he's at 4-5 to five or 1.8. He scored in each of his last three games for Germany and he scored for Chelsea at the weekend. So yeah. he's got a bit of uh, momentum behind him, I suppose. What do you think? Sounds exciting. Oh, wait. I forgot my interesting factoid. Oh, no, you didn't. Oh, you man. Just waiting. You thought you were getting away with this one, but you're going to like this one. Now, this is one of my favorite factoids of the evening. So, Hansi Flick's wife is called Silky. Silky Flick, which is something I used to do quite a bit playing five-side football. <laughs> you remember that game, Subudio? Uh, I used to flick the balls with your finger. I do. There you go. I'd say she was a dab hand at that. A dab hand? Ah, hey. man. Oh, this is Pun City. Go on, tell us okay. your uh, next game on Friday before I vomit. Yeah, look, I mean, I've been taking a look at the Czech Republic Wales game over in Group E. Um, it's looking like it's going to be probably the highlights of most of the games that, that evening, to be honest with you. Uh, Czech Republic are going to come out strong, playing at home and with a point to prove, um, coming back off, I suppose, the 1-0 defeat against uh, Wales, um, you know, in Cardiff that, um, back in March. Um, they've only hit the target though five times in the previous six games um, so which will have both the fans and even the team asking questions of themselves you know yeah yeah um, personally though I just don't think the quality is there for Wales to come away with all three points fair um, enough I do think they're going to be scrappy and they'll have it, the wind in their tails I suppose coming back off um, you know being able to actually beat the, this Czech side and I think they'll take confidence in that um, so for that reason I think we'll be looking at a draw it's not going to be a high scoring game um, I think we'll be looking at a 1 1 draw at 6 um, 1 um, or 7.0. Um, and just to let you know as well, Dan James is um, he's the only goal scorer back in the March fixture. And he was coming in at um, 6.5 there as well as an anytime goal scorer. So that might be worth a punt. That's a really good bet. A um, really good bet. Yeah, yeah. So look, um, that's kind of wrapping up the Friday fixtures. Uh, what we're going to do is just close off part one and then uh, we'll be back to you in part two to talk about Saturday's games. Before we just close off, I just want to point out that Ian said something about the team having the wind in their tails, which uh, which is awesome. <laughs> You've got to just catch me on these things, don't you? Sorry. <laughs> See you in part two. 
Welcome back to part two, if you're still here, of course. And now, Ian, we're going to take a look at some of Saturday's international action. And first of all, I am going to Solna, where Sweden take on Kosovo in Group B. In the reverse fixture, Sweden thoroughly outclassed the Kosovans 3-0, which is Kosovo's biggest defeat since November 2019. That's surprising, actually. That I is have... surprising. Yeah, yeah, fair play. Now, Sweden, naturally, after that result, they're huge odds-on favourites to complete the double. Mm-hmm. But there's no Zlatan this week. But even so, the hosts have more than enough class to get the job done, I think. Um, finding the value in the game is quite tricky, though. Um, it's worth remembering that Sweden, in 100% of the last five games, we've seen over two and a half goals. The same bet comes in at 8-11 to 11 or 1.73 on Saturday. And I think that kind of looks the pick of the bunch here. Four of Kosovo's last five games past that line, too. So maybe back goals in this one. With the result markets kind of priced out of... yeah. Out of realism, I suppose. Out of value, for sure. So stick to goals for this one. Okay, okay. But first, do you know what I forgot? Oh, here we go. I thought that was just a one-episode thing. But Man. obviously, we bring it into part two. Yeah, yeah, factoid. It's factoid time, Ian. It's factoid. And look at that smile on your face. You love these factoids. I'm you want to roll around with them. You think those factoids are going to keep <laughs> you warm at night. But they're just for your brain, man. Kosovo manager Bernard Chalandez is aged 70, which makes him really old. Is that it? Nope. Oh. He was born in a place in Switzerland called Le Locker, which is widely considered to be the birthplace of watchmaking. Interestingly, we watched him making uh, see what he did there? I see. a fool of himself in 2019 when he was caught on video ranting about what he thought was an offside goal in Kosovo's defeat to England. So he went down the tunnel going, <laughs> and then he caught glints of a camera recording him, and he put on a big massive cheesy smile. Where did you say he was born again? Le Local in Switzerland. Yeah. I'm um, thinking of going down to Le Local at the weekend, actually, myself. Ah, oh, that's an alcohol reference. Yeah. Nice. All right, what do you have for us, first of all, on Saturday, then? Let's get going. Yeah, well, look, you'll be forgiven in thinking that it's Groundhog Day, to be honest. We've got Scotland versus Israel. Again? Uh, again. It's uh, it's not a qualifying campaign if you don't have these two meeting each other. <laughs> um, I think this is like the sixth time they've played each other in the last three years. Um, so that's kind of crazy. Familiar foes, you could say. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. Scotland have only bet them once in a, with three of the last encounters being a boring draws. Oh, you know? okay. So what do you got for us then? So look, I mean, both teams have had similar runs in form through the campaign. I see goals from both sides. Um, to be honest, I predict a cagey start with Scotland on the defensive trying to counter. And you're looking at, um, you know, obviously goals will come okay i think uh, it's going to be sure fire thing anyway for 14 goals scored so far in this campaign israel have conceded 11 five of which obviously came against denmark there earlier on um, and i think scotland will be planning on those uh, gaps showing in defense and capitalizing as well but um i think the bookies are actually ruling israel out of this um you know and i, I i'm kind of surprised at this yeah, really yeah um so i'm actually looking at israel with a double chance here um, and it's a really good bet coming in at five to six or 1.83 well that's a big price for double chance israel yeah it is um i think people tend to just think scotland are obviously look they have a bit of form at the moment but you it's know still scotland isn't it still scotland they're prone to yeah dropping the ball at home especially so yeah that's yeah. definitely one to look out for yeah uh, what, what, what's coming up on your side? Well, look, everyone's wondering about Andorra versus England, of course. Heavyweight versus heavyweight. Yeah. Slugger versus slugger. <laughs> All the stars of the world on show. How much do you think Andorra are going to win by? Well, this is it, man. This is what we have to decide. <laughs> Five, six. We're only looking about 2001 on that. <laughs> oh, we can dream, Simon. We can dream. We can dream. But anyway, we're off to the picturesque surroundings of the Estadi Nazionale in Andorra, where England are obviously favourites to run riot. But, first of all, Ian... Oh, Simon, actually, um, would you mind just giving the factoid now so we can just move on and get some... I knew you were hungry for factoids. Ah, I love it. The more factoids, the merrier, I say. But Andorra can fit. Wait, no, let me give it a proper introduction. Here is your factoid. Andorra can fit into the city of London more than three times. It's that tiny. Its capital, Andorra de Avea is the highest capital in Europe. Though, oh, I bet Amsterdam will have something to say about that. <laughs> that was a drugs gag there. Yeah, and um, anyway, 
<laughs> can you, so what kind of um you know obviously oh, yeah. look a heavily stacked game mm-hmm. um yeah look let's make no odds about it england are going to win this comfortably what what are you looking at here simon well the last time england played andorra in group i last month gareth southgate shuffled his pack he let his fringe players have a run with a game against Poland mm. a few days later, so we just tried to keep his stars fresh, which makes sense, I guess. He'll probably do the same on Saturday with a game against Hungary on the horizon, so some of the same disjointedness might occur. A couple of tired players from the previous Premier League weekends as well, maybe? That's also a factor, yeah. yeah. Well, England padded their scoreline with three late goals last month against Andorra. So where am I going with this? Am I being brave? Am I predicting a low-scoring game? I it. think I'm, it might not be as many goals as the bookies expect, certainly. Under four and a half goals is risky-ish at four to seven, which is about 1.57, I think. Instead, I like the look of the second half to see more goals than the first, just like last time. And that's available at 10 to 11 or 1.91. It's interesting to note, to note actually, that seven of the last eight goals Andorra have conceded at home were scored in the second half. So I like how this one feels. Yeah, okay. It certainly squeezes the most value out of a... A pretty bad game. Excellent. Yeah, look, I mean, it, it sounds like on paper it's going to be a, a straight kind of win, but obviously what you've just talked about there seems like, um, you know, some pretty exciting bets there is all, all the same. Um, Thank you, Ian. Excellent. Nice one. So um, I'm looking at Group F still, um, and I'm looking at the Faroe Islands versus Austria. Um, and look, Austria, no a win here um, puts them back into contention. Um, anything else is going to really put pressure on their campaign. Sure. Um They'll be looking to come out of the gates early, I think. Um, the confidence will try uh, shine through following their previous win against Faroe Islands back in um, March. Um, um, I think they won 3-1 against the Faroe Islands, was it? Yeah, 3-1, yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, so look, I'm expecting a similar result. I think Austria just beginning to come into the game once fitness level has dropped from the home t- team in the second half. Um, so I was having a look around. Uh, odds are fairly heavily stacked in Austria's favour, but um, some of the, you know, kind of, second half to have most goals um, that's looking good um, I'm looking at maybe a 6-5 to five, um, or 2.2 2. so it's not a, not a bad shout if you're looking at um, you know seeing where the goals are going to come from yeah and that makes sense yeah, yeah makes nice sense. odds mm. so anyway Simon and look we're coming into the last game you have now yeah um, and that will also mean hopefully the last factoid so can we just get that out of the way now <laughs> oh I thought you'd never ask So we are looking at Moldova versus Denmark and a big shout out to all our Danish listeners, all three of you. Hi. Hello. Hello. Do you know what the Danish is for hello? I think it's Um, hello. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And I think the Irish for, we're we're obviously Irish, is Mm -hmm. how are you? How's it going there, Denmark? How are you getting on? Look, let's get to this factoid before I burst. 34 miles of wine? No, it's not a road trip with Gary Neville. Moldova boasts the largest wine collection in the world, with more than 1.5 million bottles in a 34-mile underground cellar at the Melesti Mitzi Winery. Winery or winery? I don't know. Well, look, we'll all hope to be winneries at the end of this weekend, Simon. So, um, what I'll kind... set you up there. You're welcome. Yeah, I just knocked it back to you. Um, tell me, what, what's going on in this game? Well, look, Denmark are the only team in the entire World Cup European qualification area with a 100% record from the group game so far. They're just playing really, really well at the moment, aren't they? They're just good, mm. They're exciting to watch. They're just full of young players and yeah. enthusiasm. And I mean, I optimism in the camp must be just sky high. Yeah, and I they think after the Euros as well. The Euros, I think, yeah. I think they just won a lot of neutrals over, didn't they? Yeah, they kind so of they're a great team to watch. Everyone's second favourite team almost. Mm. They absolutely hammered Moldova 8 0 when the teams met in Herning back in March. So it's a pretty exciting time to be a, a Danish football fan right now. Moldova mm. are easily, easily the worst team in Group F. They've lost 6 out of 6. And sorry both, to all our Moldovan fans. Sorry, Moldovan fans. I apologise, but you're, you're rubbish. And you're going to struggle again on Saturday by the looks of things. Uh, naturally, Denmark have been priced out of the park in terms of match result markets, which is to be expected. So we have to look elsewhere for a bit of value. Mm-hmm. I don't think they're going to tear Moldova to shreds like they did last time. Austria could only score twice in Chisnau last month. And one of those efforts was scored four minutes into added on time at the end. So it might be a more modest scoreline. 
Obviously, Denmark is still favourites to win. So I think if you couple a Denmark victory with under three and a half goals, it looks a solid price at 21 to 20 or 2.05 for that one. What do you reckon? Uh, that sounds really good. Um, and look, for the Moldovan fans out there, um, you know, you'll probably be watching your second favourite team anyway beat you. So <laughs> that's it. Yeah. There you go. Brightened your day in Moldova. Um, great. So um, I'm just looking at Group C here as well. All right. Um, and Switzerland versus Northern Ireland. They've just come back, obviously, off uh, the two uh, teams met each other there last month. Um, and it was a stalemate um, in Northern Ireland. Um, so, look, I mean, it's not that long ago. Is there going to be too much of a, an improvement from both sides? To be honest, I just feel like Switzerland have this in the bag. I, I think they were lucky to get away. Um, with a nil-nil draw in Northern Ireland um, Seferovic um, he failed to convert the penalty in the first half um, and yeah look I mean I think a result here from Murray Yakin's men would just take them five points ahead in Northern Ireland um, with Northern Ireland possibly actually slipping to fourth in the group and suddenly mm-hmm. on the back foot after a decent start to the campaign um, so I think Switzerland are probably just going to have this quality and they have the experience on these high campa- campaigns as well you know Um that would be extremely difficult to score against on home soil and I just don't see enough quality in the Northern Irish side to do this. In fact, I'm looking at a solid, confident win from the Swiss and no goals from Northern Ireland. Um, so I actually went with a two-win-to-nil bet and that's coming in at 1.83. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah. So I think that's a really good um, juicy bet as well. Yeah, I mm. like it, Ian. It's a nice mm. way to wrap up. It is, yeah. So, um, any um, any predictions um, elsewhere, Simon? Or well, I guess we could kind of take a look at your favorite bet from Friday. Maybe what have you what have you got? Yeah, I think my favorite bet has to be um, really looking at the the Latvia um, Netherlands game again and looking okay. at that um, Latvia or draw by the half time um, at three two five uh, three point two five. I think that's, that's really a huge, yeah, it's huge. Yeah, it is. Yeah, um, uh, you know, I think. Netherlands just might might have a few issues at the back as well, um, but I just don't think. Like I think Lafayette are just going to park the bus as well, you know. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, my favorite from Friday would be a Croatia win and under two and a half goals combo against Cyprus. Mm-hmm. It comes in at a pretty massive two point eight eight, I think. Yeah, yeah, it looks cool. And on Saturday, I would go for the Denmark win and under three and a half goals, which looks solid at twenty one to twenty or two point oh five. What do you like for Saturday then? If you had to put the house on one of your three Saturday bets, where I, would you go? Oh, I think the Israel double chance. I mean, it's coming in at one point eight three. Um, you know, they've just been, you know, Scotland. Yeah, Scotland are nothing special at the moment. They've the record isn't even there against Israel, and I think realistically speaking, these two teams know each other a lot uh, more than any other teams that they've probably met in the last few years. Um, so I think, you know, you're, you're looking at an Israel double chance. It's a really good bet. Yeah, I agree. Nice one, Ian. Well, thank you for listening, everyone. Remember to check out Odds Profit on Facebook and on their website for the latest expert tips. Uh, and also, also gamble responsibly. Of course, always gamble responsibly. Have a great week. Talk to you soon. Goodbye. Oh, <laughs>